Imagine an annualized return of 66% with not a single loss in 29 years. Sounds like a fantasy, right? But for Edward O. Thorpe, it's a reality. This isn't the plot of an improbable Wall Street movie, but the actual financial track record of a mathematics professor turned market wizard. Thorpe's extraordinary success story is a testament to the power of calculated risk and a brilliant mind. So how did Thorpe achieve such remarkable success? Let's unfold the secrets. The first lesson from Thorpe's playbook. Understand that, in the stock market, the house always wins. Now, this concept might seem a bit perplexing to those unfamiliar with Thorpe's philosophy. Edward O. Thorpe, a mathematics professor, used his academic prowess to crack the code of the stock market. He saw the market as a giant casino, a game of chance with probabilities and odds. Thorpe's background in mathematics allowed him to view the market through a unique lens. He was no stranger to probability theory, a branch of mathematics that deals with the analysis of random phenomena. This theory became the backbone of his approach to the stock market. He understood that, just like a roll of dice or a spin of a roulette wheel, market movements could be unpredictable, yet they were not entirely devoid of patterns or trends. So, how does this tie back to the idea that the house always wins? Well, in a casino, the games are designed to give the house a slight edge. It's this edge that guarantees profits for the casino in the long run. Despite the random nature of each individual game, in the stock market, the house refers to the market itself. It's the big players, the institutions with vast resources and insider information that have the upper hand. Thorpe figured out that the stock market, like a casino, was rigged in favor of the house. But instead of being daunted, he decided to use his mathematical prowess to beat the odds. He developed strategies that would allow him to exploit the same advantages that the house had. Thorpe's approach wasn't about picking the right stocks or timing the market perfectly. It was about understanding the market's inherent biases and using them to his advantage. It was about playing the long game, about embracing the randomness and using probability to tilt the odds in his favor. And that's the crux of Thorpe's first lesson, the house always wins. But if you can't beat the house, why not become the house? By understanding the market's biases and leveraging them, you too can become a winner in the game of stocks. Thorpe's strategy isn't about beating the house, but becoming the house. Thorpe's second key to success is diversification. Now, let's unravel this term, shall we? Diversification, in the simplest of terms, is a risk management strategy that involves spreading investments across various financial instruments or sectors. It's like a buffet spread where you sample a little bit of everything rather than gorging on just one dish. So, how did Thorpe incorporate this into his investment strategy? Well, Thorpe didn't just bet on one horse, he bet on the whole race. He spread his investments across a broad spectrum of assets, thereby reducing his exposure to any single asset's performance. This way, even if one investment didn't pan out, others could compensate for the loss. Now, you might be wondering what's so great about diversification. Well, the magic of diversification lies in its capacity to maximize returns while minimizing risk. When you diversify your portfolio, you're not just spreading your investments, you're also spreading your risk. And by spreading your risk, you're increasing your chances of earning a steady return. But here's the catch. Diversification isn't a one-size-fits-all strategy. It requires a deep understanding of the market, the ability to identify potential opportunities, and the courage to take calculated risks. And that's where Thorpe's genius comes into play. His mathematical prowess, combined with his keen understanding of the market dynamics, allowed him to successfully apply this strategy and reap its benefits. So, what can we learn from Thorpe's approach to diversification? It's simple. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Spread them across multiple baskets. Explore different sectors, different financial instruments. But remember, diversification is not just about investing in different assets. It's about investing in the right assets. However, don't forget that diversification is not a surefire way to prevent losses. It's a strategy to manage risk. And as with any strategy, it requires careful planning, meticulous execution, and constant monitoring. Diversification isn't about putting all your eggs in one basket, but spreading them across multiple baskets. And that, my friends, is the essence of Thorpe's second key to success. In the third place, Thorpe was a pioneer in using technology to aid his investing. Now, we live in an era where technology is intertwined with our daily lives. But imagine a time when computers were still in their infancy, not yet a household item. 
That's when Edward O. Thorpe, a man ahead of his time, realized the potential of this powerful tool in the world of investing. Thorpe was among the first to use computers for stock analysis. He recognized that technology could sift through vast amounts of data more efficiently and accurately than any human could. This allowed him to identify patterns and trends that were not evident to the naked eye, giving him an edge over his competitors. But how did this work exactly? Well, Thorpe used computers to analyze historical stock prices, looking for patterns and correlations that could predict future movements. He designed algorithms that could process this data and provide actionable insights. This use of technology in investing is now known as quantitative analysis, and it's a common practice among today's top investors. But Thorpe didn't stop there. He also used technology to manage risk. He developed a mathematical model that could calculate the optimal amount to invest in each stock based on its expected return and risk. This model, known as the Kelly Criterion, is still widely used today. The benefits of using technology for data analysis and prediction are numerous. It allows investors to make more informed decisions, reducing the risk of losses. It also saves time, as computers can process data much faster than humans. Moreover, it offers a level of objectivity, eliminating the emotional biases that can cloud human judgment. Today, technology has become an indispensable tool in investing. From robo-advisors that manage portfolios to AI algorithms that predict stock trends, technology continues to revolutionize the world of investing. Thorpe's pioneering use of technology in investing was a game-changer. It set a new standard for the industry, demonstrating that technology could not only simplify the investment process but also optimize returns. So, are you ready to let technology guide your investment decisions? Finally, Thorpe's success wouldn't have been possible without patience and discipline. These traits were not just elements of his character, but were the pillars upon which he built his investment strategy. When we think of the stock market, we often picture a chaotic scene of traders making split-second decisions. But this kind of frantic activity is the opposite of Thorpe's approach. He understood that the stock market is not a sprint but a marathon. It's not about making a quick buck but about long-term growth. This is where patience comes into play. Patience, in the context of investing, is about resisting the urge to react to every market fluctuation, every piece of news. It's about understanding that the value of investments can rise and fall in the short term, but over the long term, they tend to increase. Thorpe didn't panic when the market dipped, nor did he become overly excited when it spiked. He remained calm, steady, and patient. Next, let's talk about discipline. Discipline, when it comes to investing, means sticking to your strategy even when it's tempting to deviate. It's easy to be swayed by the latest trends, the hot new stocks, the fear of missing out. But Thorpe didn't let these distractions affect him. He had a strategy and he stuck to it, year in and year out. This discipline allowed him to weather market downturns and to ignore the noise and hype that can lead to rash decisions. It allowed him to keep his eyes on the prize, to focus on his long-term goals rather than short-term gains. What's remarkable is that Thorpe's approach is not just about making money. It's about a way of life. It's about understanding that success doesn't come overnight. It requires patience, discipline, and a dedication to a long-term vision. As Thorpe shows us, patience and discipline are more than virtues. They're strategies for success. So, there you have it. The secrets behind Edward O. Thorpe's remarkable success in the stock market. He understood that in the long run, the house always wins. And so, he diversified his investments, spreading the risk and increasing his chances of success. But Thorpe wasn't a conventional player. He leveraged the power of technology to analyze market trends and predict profitable investments. Most importantly, he demonstrated patience and discipline, remaining steadfast in his strategies even in the face of temporary setbacks. These are not just the strategies of one man, but timeless principles that can guide any investor towards success. The stock market isn't a game of chance, but a game of strategy. With the right approach, anyone can achieve remarkable returns, just like Thorpe did. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insights into successful investing. Remember, the stock market isn't a game of chance, but a game of strategy.